Can the iPhone 8 take down the S9? Let's find out in a speed test. Let's go. So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology. Welcome to the iPhone 8 versus the S9 speed test. In this video, I want to see if the iPhone 8 can beat Samsung's latest or the other way around. Let's begin with a boot up test in three, two, and let's go and see which one can boot up first. Now, I think this might be the S9. Now, both of these phones are unlocked. Neither one of these are carrier phones. Snapdragon 845 on the right. And over here on the left, you have the Apple A11 Bionic chipset, four gigs of RAM on the right and two gigs of RAM on the left. But we know Apple doesn't really need as much RAM to make their phones run fast. And the iPhone 8 with the win over the S9 on the boot up test. Okay, so the iPhone 8 was the clear winner when it comes to the boot up test, but is it faster when it comes to the fingerprint? Now, first of all, on the S9's fingerprint, all you have to do is tap it and it'll go right in. On the iPhone, you either have to hit the power button or you know that click and then it'll open up on the iPhone 8. But let's see off the lock screen, which one can get home first, three, two, and one. And that's the Samsung Galaxy S9. One more time, three, two, one and way faster on the S9, and that location is much easier and ergonomic than the prior S8, so you're not missing this one at all once you get used to it on the S9, and it's actually a faster fingerprint scanner, I feel like, as well. Now, coming from the lock screen, what you'll do on the iPhone 8 is you'll click it, and you'll just rush your finger here, like from always on display, so three, two, one, and you can see it's still faster, even with the click. So. It, in terms of getting into your phone, you're always gonna be faster on an S9. All right, so we've arrived at the application portion of this speed test. What does $700 get you versus $720 Android 8.0 Oreo on the right, iOS 11.2.6. Let's begin with the clock. And you can see that looks slightly to the iPhone maybe, but the animations are faster on the S9 even coming home. Let's go into calendar. You can see, I think that was the S9 coming home. Let's go into calculator. That looked like maybe the iPhone 8. These are so close, it's really hard to call. What about settings? And you can see that looked like the iPhone 8. Coming home, let's go into Instagram. And Instagram's a load first for the S9. Now we're rolling in the third party apps. What about Twitter? You can see Twitter first for the S9 and now the iPhone. What about WhatsApp? WhatsApp on the S9 and there is the iPhone. What about Snapchat? Three, two, one. You could see Snapchat on the right first and then on the left. So the second row goes totally to the S9. What about YouTube? YouTube is first there for the S9. Coming home, let's go into Amazon. And Amazon is first again for the S9. So third party apps just go into the S9. What about Chrome? Chrome loads first there for the S9 again. Coming home, let's go into Lightroom. And you can see Lightroom is first on the right. So the S9 just crushing it right here. Let's go into Netflix. And Netflix, boom, on the right again. Wow, nice performance, Samsung. Let's go into Jetpack. And I actually missed that one on the iPhone, a little mistap. It happens from time to time. Let's go into Jetpack Joyride. And the games should be a win for the iPhone. And no, this one goes to the S9. Let's do that one more time because before I did this video, the Jetpack Joyride actually opened first on the iPhone 8. I wanted to just make sure that is the case. Jetpack Joyride. And you can see about the same. So they're very equal when it comes to that Jetpack Joyride. What about Dead Trigger 2, a more graphically intensive game? And the loading is going to look like the iPhone 8. Now, what about playing the game? Which one can actually get into the graphics and the game first? Looks like the 8 is ahead as we would expect. And yes, the eight is definitely ahead. And I also and I also found that the iPhone eight has better graphics than the Galaxy S9. So when you're playing it, it looks a little bit smoother than the S9. Also the graphics to me just look a little bit better than on the S9. But that's not to say that the S9 is not a good gaming phone. It is a pretty great gaming phone, but the graphics just look better and smoother to me on the iPhone eight over the S9. All right, so what about Geekbench? You can see Geekbench opens first on the left, but you could just see how close these really are. Speed test and speed test on the right to the S9. Super fast phone there, and that's Snapdragon 845. Coming home, let's go into weather now. Three, two, one. And you can see weather opens first for the iPhone 8. Let's do that again. 
you could see every time the Samsung has to reload that weather. So that weather app is always going to be faster on the iPhone. What about Magisto? And you can see Magisto opens first on the right and then on the left. But we're going to do a video rendering test in just a minute. Okay, so I've seen the S9 Plus do very great when it comes to the RAM management, but can the smaller S9 do the same? We're going to go back through the applications backwards. Let's begin with Magisto. And you can see Magisto is open first on the S9. What about speed test? That looked like the S9 as well. What about Geekbench? S9 as well. Coming home. What about Dead Trigger? And that looked like the S9 again. Nice stuff. What about Jetpack? That's the iPhone 8. And let's go into Netflix. And boom. Let's go into Lightroom. That looked about the same. What about Chrome? Maybe the iPhone 8. It doesn't really matter how fast it comes back here. What really matters here is does any of them reload? Coming home. Let's go into YouTube. And you can see iPhone 8 definitely with the faster animations on the RAM management. And there is the S9, WhatsApp, no reloads though on both. Twitter, coming home, let's go into Instagram. And there's a reload there for the iPhone 8 coming home. Let's go into settings. And that is the Galaxy S9. Let's go into calculator, iPhone 8, calendar, about the same clock about the same so you've seen there on the ram management samsung has definitely improved on their s9 and it's basically on par now with the iphone 8 the iphone 10 the iphone 8 plus and sometimes a little faster but the animations on the s9 is not as fast as phones like the oneplus 5t for example but it's a little bit faster than the iphone's animation when it comes to the single app but then when you go into multitasking the iphone's app actually flies open first so they're about equal when it comes to the speed test. Okay, so let's run a Wi-Fi speed test to see which one can pull in better speeds here. I'm gonna hit go on the iPhone 8 and see what we get on this test and then we'll do the S9. Now, I think that the iPhone 8 is gonna pull in a little bit better speeds. That's what I've seen so far when I compare Apple to Samsung. Usually my iPhones get better speeds, but I wouldn't be surprised if the newer technology in the Galaxy S9 allows it to just pull ahead just a little bit. But we'll see here 119 on the download and about 11 on the upload We're waiting for that 5g to get like that hundred on the upload that'd be really nice 11.44 11.5 11.6 and we're done here let's go into the samsung galaxy s9 and see what it can get on the download and it looks like it's going to surpass maybe the iphone 8 nope it's hanging right around the same there so i guess they're pulling in around the same speeds on this test it does surpass the iphone 8 there we go just by one megabyte and then on the upload it's pulling in a little bit better speeds as well so you know this is a great phone all around when it comes to speed and everything it beats the iphone 8 here once again all right guys so let's go ahead and run a render comparison on magisto this is a video editor maker and i'm gonna go ahead and make the movie now i already have this file rendered let's go and we're gonna see which one can actually finish this eight versus S9 comparison test here. Now, I think it's gonna be the iPhone eight that wins here, but we might be shocked in seeing if the uh, Galaxy S9 can win here. But A11 Bionic is good at this stuff, like really good at this stuff. So we shall see. I'm gonna speed it up just a little bit and come to the final results as these take about a minute or so because this is 4K. Okay, so we have some surprising results here. Now, the S9 is playable, but you can see it's not done uploading yet, whereas the iPhone 8 is fully done uploading this video. So you can see that the iPhone 8 is more powerful right here in this test on video editing. We're still waiting for this to finish on the S9 by quite a bit there. You can see how much more bar we have to go. So that proves right there that the iPhone 8 and the A11 is really good at that video editing stuff. But let's go ahead and run a Geekbench to see their benchmarking results here, and I'll be back when they are done. And the final Geekbench scores are in 2424 on the single core for the S9, 4264 on the single for the iPhone 8, so a crushing win for the 8, 7567 on the multi for the S9, and 10,017 on the 8. What do these scores mean? Well, technically speaking, the iPhone 8 is a more powerful smartphone. But in the day to day, I think the S9, you feel it more just because of its snappier, you know, fingerprint scanner. It's got intelligent scan. The application just open a little bit quicker. You can tweak the animations. It feels like you feel that speed a little bit more on the S9 from the day to day. And I know some people are going to say, man, why don't you just retest these with the Samsung Exynos version of the S9? Well, I'm in the American market, so that's what they sell here. And if you think that millions 
other people are not going to buy the Snapdragon 845 series, you got another thing coming. As a matter of fact, I was reading the other day that the Samsung Galaxy S9 in Korea is actually down. The sales are down in Korea, their home country, which is a country that will sell the Exynos model. But many people are going to be buying both, but I do feel like there's a ton of people that are going to be buying the Snapdragon 845. So whether you see an Exynos comparison or a SD845 comparison, they're both equally relevant. And that's pretty much it here between the iPhone 8 and the Galaxy S9. If you have any other video suggestions related to these two, drop it down below. If you want to see a full comparison, which one to buy, I will consider making that if many people do want to see it. Get a bunch of thumbs up on your comments, and we will consider that. Anyway, Nick here helping you to master your technology. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe for more. I will catch you all in the next video. Have a great day, and thank you very much for watching. Be sure to be well, and peace.